Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. Welcome to the 60th Emerging Growth Conference and day one of our first two-day super virtual investor conference. I'm Anna Berry. So just a few notes for those attending. All of our conferences, they're uploaded to the Emerging Growth Conference YouTube channel. So please subscribe there, youtube.com slash Emerging Growth Conference. Now, today we're going to be running until about 3 p.m. Eastern. And when we switch to the next company, you'll see a black screen for a moment. Don't go anywhere. It's just us moving over. But if you do experience downtime, refresh your browser. Everything should work properly again. And our platform does work best on Google Chrome. So if you're watching from an Apple device, you have to hit the play button to start the session. Now, during each company's presentation today, you can submit questions through our webcast module, and we will attempt to address as many of these at the end of their presentation. Let's begin, starting with Spire Global Inc. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol SPIR and is a global provider of space-based data, analytics, and space services offering unique data sets and powerful insights about Earth so that organizations can make decisions with confidence in a rapidly changing world. Spire builds, owns, and operates a fully deployed satellite constellation that observes the Earth in real time using radio frequency technology. The data acquired by Spire satellites provides global weather intelligence, ship and plane movements, and roofing and jamming detection to better predict how their patterns impact economies, global security, business operations, and the environment. Let's welcome the CEO, Peter Plotzer. Nice to see you, Peter. Welcome. It's fantastic to be here. Thanks so much, Anna. All right. The floor is yours. Great way to begin our conference today. And call me back when you're ready for questions. Absolutely, will do. And, and welcome, everyone, for myself as well. Um, my name is Peter Platzer. I am one of the founders and the CEO of, uh, of Spire Global, um, a space company that is entirely focused on the future of planet Earth, um, providing global data and analytics, leveraging space to improve life on Earth. Um, as you are surely aware, you know, as a public company, there's a whole lot of disclaimers. And so um, please uh, uh, feel yourself fully, fully disclaimed with these statements. Now, there is a lot of activity happening in space um, over the last few years, where more and more comp companies are leveraging space to improve life on Earth. And it can be a tad overwhelming as people feel like everyone is using space and what are they all doing and you know, how, how they relate to each other. So um, maybe for those of you that are maybe a little bit newer to uh, a space, so to speak, um, there's a little framework that we often share that, that might be helpful. When you think of the transportation industry, you know, everyone understands that there are trains and there are ships and there are planes, and everyone understands how they're different, even though they share a lot of things in common. When you think about it, they all have engines and they all have passengers and they have windows and they have captains and, and many of them have wheels, right? So there's a lot of similarities, but we intuitively understand how a, a plane is different from a train, is different from a ship because we've seen them and, and many of us have used them as well. Well, it's actually quite similar in space with the only difference that we call everything a satellite, even though the big use cases are as different as ships, planes, and trains. And those are looking satellites, talking satellites, and listening satellites. On the looking satellites, um, those are satellites that use the reflection of the sunlight on the surface of Earth as it goes up towards the heaven, and that is how they capture their data. It works particularly well during the day, of course, because the sun is needed, and in good weather because you need to have a clear view you know, up all on the way to space. And there are companies that you probably have heard of, like a Black Sky, a Maxar, a Planet, a Satellogy, a, an Airbus. All of those companies are operating in the looking space. Then we have the talking space. Now, talking satellites, they are transportation devices. They transport data from one spot on Earth via space to another spot on Earth. Um, uh, and they do that with, um, uh, with uh, uh, technology that is often called you know, telecommunication or communications. And there are satellites in there that you might have heard of, like, like Viasat or SES or AST um, or, or Starlink or Kuipers or OneWeb. 
all of those satellites fall into the talking uh, category. And then you have the listening category. Those are satellites that use radio frequency technology or RF technology to observe what is happening on or around Earth. Now, RF has the unique capability of operating not just during day and night, obviously it doesn't need the sun, as well as in, in, in any weather condition. As a matter of fact, you can actually learn something about the weather using radio frequency technology or RF technology. Like for example, the, the speed of a hurricane um, or, or the soil moisture or the temperature of the atmosphere. All of these are things that you can learn using RF technologies. And again, there is a number of companies that you, you might have heard of, like you know, Geoptics and Planet IQ and Hawkeye and Spire being uh, in that category as well. Now, Spire happens to be, um, as far as we know, the largest company in that category. It's the only one which has a fully deployed constellation. What does fully deployed mean? It means that Spire doesn't intend to grow the constellation. Um, it has exactly the assets in space that it needs. That constellation covers the Earth all the time, um, uh, and it, uh, it's collecting the data from the software-defined devices that we have using radio frequency technology. Now, that is a pretty useful framework because while you do have, of course, potential competition inside those categories, just like planes might compete with each other and trains might compete with each other, you don't really have competition across the categories. Stuff that you can do with a train is generally something that is pretty hard to do with a ship, to use that analogy again. So I think it's a pretty useful framework um, that, that might be helpful for some of you. Now, if we dive a little bit more into Spire, um, uh, over 100 satellites, fourth largest constellation on the planet, the largest multipurpose constellation, the largest RF technology-based constellation, and all of that technology was invented by Spire. It is built by Spire. It is operated by Spire. You can't buy it anywhere. Um, you can't buy it anywhere. And some of the stuff was was pretty tricky to build. I mean, the people at NASA when I started out said, "Peter, you're gonna have to break the laws of physics to make this work." Now, I am a physicist. You know, I I, I trained at CERN and Max Planck Institute, amongst other places. Um, uh, and I can promise you, we didn't break any laws of physics, um, but it definitely um, allowed us to build a massive moat around the company inventing that technology. Now, this is the collection of the data in space, and then you bring the data down, where Spire again has a proprietary network on the ground of ground stations um, that are ours, you know, over 70 antennas in 16, location, 16 countries that is bringing that data down. The only thing we don't do ourselves is like the transportation from the ground to the space, where we use any of a number of rocket companies. We've done this over 35 uh, times now in the last few years with um, uh, uh, at least 10 different rocket companies that transport our devices um, into space. Now, what makes leveraging space to improve life on Earth so tricky and so valuable is that you cannot simulate how to do this on Earth. You literally have to go there to space and try it out and learn how it works. Now, Spire has done this and accumulated over 500 years, more than half a millennium of experience in how to operate those devices and sensors in space. Another massive moat that the company has developed around out over the last few years. On the right-hand side, you see like a, a few more data points from more the business perspective. You know, we got over 400 people um, from over 45 countries that sit in our um, eight offices on three continents so that we have 24-7 operations, 24-7 engagement with customers, 24-7 um, um, ability to reach out into the various labor pools across the world and attract the most fun, engaging, and inspiring and bright people to help our customers with the business. Customers, um, we get just under 800 um, uh, solution customers that, uh, that use our data as a subscription and with, it, with the guidance of, of this year of 132 million of annually recurring revenue. Now talking about that, you know, if we, if we start on the right-hand side, it gives you a little bit of a sense of the, of the massive growth that the company has, um, has experienced really demonstrating the pent-up demand 
for the solutions that the company has. When in 2017, we had our first constellation that covers the earth, you know, a fully, we had our first annual um, 1 million subscription revenue that then grew in five years time to just under 100 million um, in 2022 with a, with, with, a, with a target of 130 by the end of this year. That's a compound annual growth rate over this period of time of 109%, really demonstrating the exceptional value that we bring to our customers and the pent up demand for our products. Now, where can you particularly see that our customers that use our products love them and want more of them? It's how often do they renew and when they renew, do they buy more? And yes, do they buy more? It's measured in a number called net retention rate, and it measures how much more customers buy on average when they renew with us. And it's 117% was our net retention rate at the end of 2022. On the left-hand side, you see a little bit the makeup of our customer base. Um, we collect all of the maritime data, everything which is happening on the ocean, tracking you know, 500,000 or more ships every single day. We track all of the world's planes and we track all of the world's weather. And then we create that data and we create analytics out of it and we sell it as a subscription. If you take all of that together, um, uh, Spire serves 175 roughly major use cases as someone identified for 150 to 200,000 potential customers. And that's why we have been able to grow so rapidly. You heard earlier, 800 customers is where we roughly are out of this massive, massive uh, potential market that we have. So really, really very, very early on, but absolutely loving the trajectory that we're on, making a difference for our customers so much so that they keep on uh, engaging with us more. Now, some of you um, have been with us um, uh, a little while ago. So let me give you an update of all the exciting things that have been happening since we had these conversations last. Um, one of the first things that happened, we had our annual shareholder meeting, um, where with an overwhelming support of our shareholders, um, a reverse stock split was approved, which allows us to get to a share price which is higher than the current one, um, uh, and, and give access to a larger number of an investor base that likes to invest in companies that have a share price above a dollar, above three dollars, above five dollars. Whenever you have those thresholds, different investor groups are able to invest, and we now have the ability um, to present ourselves um, with, with that vote. Then we have um, uh, uh, launched a new technology that I sometimes like to call lasers in space, because that literally is um, uh, what we do. We use lasers to connect satellites and transport data very securely and very quickly between those satellites to give our customers more secure and faster access to our data. A first of its kind technology in the weight class of our satellites that we are absolutely excited to have developed and have deployed and demonstrated to help our customers with their ever more demanding applications. There's been some, uh, some pretty major awards that have been um, announced recently. I'm just going to talk about a couple. Um, NASA upped uh, what they're buying from us to now six and a half million dollars over the next 12 months of Earth observation data, um, and particularly for, for Earth sciences, for climate, for weather. Uh, and we're excited to be helping them uh, understanding how, uh, how Earth operates. And then uh, a commercial customer that is uh, targeting wildfire detection has again upped their commitment with Spire um, to eight satellites, a whole constellation where they're using our backbone to drive their use case, which is helping the world adapt to climate change and monitoring um, wildfires. And because this is such a, I would say, timely and important one, um, please let me, uh, let me show you a short video that tells you the story of Aurora Tech. Really excited about what those guys are doing, and I think it's worth a watch. Every launch is exciting, but the Spire team is particularly excited about the recent Aurora Tech launch. This marks the second successful launch collaboration between our organizations and is a textbook example of how Spire Space Services delivers on our space as a service solution. Our first one and our first two missions are focused on detecting thermal anomalies from space. So you can see the first one's fair model here. 
uh, which is similar to the one that we launched one and a half years ago. Forest 2 is, is expanding on the Forest 1 mission, uh, so with those satellites we detect thermal anomalies uh, for our customers. We provide valuable insights to uh, the wildfire industry, also to insurance industry, um, to the energy sector. This most recent launch is called Force 2 and is the first commercial satellite for Aurora Tech. The thermal imaging camera has been revamped and improved, but it isn't technology for technology's sake. This will ultimately save homes, forests, wildlife, and most importantly, human lives, as human lives are at stake not only when fighting the fires, but also when monitoring them from Earth. After the Forest 2 mission, the next step is to launch uh, eight sensors into space so we can get data to our customers uh, up to six times per day. And we're excited for Aurora Tech's continuous journey with us as we build out the Forest Constellation, which will be the first ever in-space solution providing unprecedented daily, near real-time strategic intelligence on all active wildfires at a scale and scope previously not possible. We just aspire for this mission because, first of all, uh, it worked very well for the first one missions. So we, we reached our, all our goals there, demonstrating our technology very quickly in space. The second reason is that there's a lot of heritage with Inspire for successful CubeSat missions. So we just de-risk uh, our technology there. The partnership between our organizations allows Aurora Tech to concentrate on their area of expertise, while Spire focuses on ours getting our customers' payloads into space. Optics, antenna, software, or an application, whatever your payload, Spire takes the complexity, high cost, and high risk of getting that payload into space out of the equation with our space as a service model. When you think space, think Spire. So excited um, for, 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 the, for the brilliant people at Aurora Tech and their really important missions and very honored that they chose us um, to grow the constellation now with another eight satellites. And with that, I'm excited to any questions that uh, the audience or Anna might have for us. Great job, Peter. Yes, it really seems like you've had so much good news since our last discussion. So are there still some more items you're working on in the pipeline you can talk about? Um, the, the, the last statement suddenly cut down a, a lot of what I can talk about, but yes, indeed, there is a number of things that we can uh, uh, that, that we can we can uh, we can talk about. Um, uh, we're making progress on uh, on some of our important contributions to global security with regards to um, to radio frequency geolocation. Um, there are some very exciting things that you know hopefully you will you will hear soon. Um, uh, we're also making progress uh, with regards to, to technology. Um, uh, you know, we talked about the, the lasers in space, the optical and the satellite links, but there's also additional data types to help with weather and climate that we are collecting where we're making progress on that one. So I would say um, stay tuned for the Spire channel. Um, there will be some very exciting uh, announcement coming, coming down the pipeline very soon, similar to the ones I talked about today, like as a $6.5 million contract. Perfect. Uh, can you talk about some sales cycle and how do deals, how have they been coming together? Are, are customers more cautious in this current environment? So yes and no. I think, I think, I think it depends. Um, uh, uh, some parts of the current environment make customers really lean in and looking for ways to, to drive down their costs and, and be more efficient. That whole global digitalization of the economy is really helping a lot of companies take out costs uh, of their operations by leveraging data and analytics that you know prior often wasn't even accessible at all because you need a satellite constellation to have it. So that is that is instances where we see customers actually accelerating the sales cycle, and we had some some of the fastest sales cycles ever in the in the uh, in the current environment. Um, uh, because of, of that dynamic that I just explained. But we also sometimes see cases where customers getting a little bit more cautious um, because the, the environment is not as positive. But I would say um, the Peter from three months ago um, had a substantially more difficult macroeconomic environment than the Peter that you get to talk with today. 
So there is a little bit of a of a positive optimism, I would say, on the horizon, and that uh, that is something that we also feel in our engagements, in our conversations with our customers. Well, let's talk about competition. Comment a little bit on the competitive landscape out there, especially when it comes to other markets. Plus, have you seen any companies emerge recently? Any change in your expectations and the market position you guys are holding? So I would say overall, um, there is an, a tremendous amount of activity of companies that are wanting to leverage space to improve life on Earth. And that, of course, is fantastic for Spire because we have our space services product, which you can think of as Amazon AWS, but for space, where companies that have an idea, um, be that a software or a payload, a type of data that they want to collect to improve life on Earth, they can just rent the infrastructure from Spire and get right into building the business model, Aurora Tech being one of them that we just talked about beforehand. And there's many companies that are doing that, and there's a continued growth of the number of companies. So we actually see a lot of interesting um, uh, business models and ideas coming up, and that's very, very good for us because they can leverage our infrastructure um, uh, uh, in our space services model. Um, I have to tell you, and I, I'm in like these areas that we particularly do, um, we have not seen that much movement, to be honest. Um, uh, there's certainly no one on the horizon that I'm aware of that has like this full spectrum offering for customers, which allows someone to maybe start in the in the maritime space and do like you know some tracking of their of their commodity shipments, and then you know get analytics on when they will arrive, and then get weather information of how that is impacting the, the vessel journey, um, because we have all these different data types. So I would say overall, we see tremendous growth in comp companies leveraging space for the you know the betterment of life on Earth, which is very beneficial for one of our uh, one of our main offerings and one of the main solutions. In our data solutions, we have not seen dramatic change so far uh, with regards to new entrants coming up with you know wanting to launch a, a, a competing constellation, um, uh, at least at this point in time. Well, the hot topic in the market right now is AI, obviously, and machine learning. So is Spire seeing a benefit from this trend? In, in multiple ways, and at least three of them, um, uh, you know, maybe we can briefly talk about. The first one is what AI is always staffed for is training data. And what Spire has is as this massive, massive data vault of data that is only available from space. We recently did a webinar where we said, let's talk about our data vault of maritime vessel tracking and information. And it was the largest sign up and the largest webinar we ever had. So massive amount of interest for the unique data that we have, because that is always the bottleneck for creating the value for AI and machine learning, which is why we're pretty excited about, I would say the second element which is um, uh, the use of AI and machine learning to, to, to mine our data vault to create even more beneficial products and services for our customers. And we absolutely are doing that. Using that, for example, for, um, uh, for routing um, efficiency, be that on the oceans or be that with aircraft, um, uh, uh, just, to, just to name a couple of examples. So we see that benefit as well. And then the third one is, um, uh, which I really do not want to underestimate here, is using AI and machine learning in our business operations, where it allows us to have a more personalized engagement with customers, for example, um, a faster reaction time, um, a more uh, targeted approach to helping customers achieve their business objectives by leveraging a technology like AI and machine learning, in particular generative AI, like the, like the famous chat GPT that we have heard so much about. And certainly those are technologies that Spire is using in our operations to help our customers just as little bit more. Makes complete sense. So uh, recently Spire has been talking about the need for companies to have a space strategy. So is this something everyone's gonna have to start to adopt pretty soon? Talk a little bit about what you mean by that. So first of all, you know, I'm, I'm, we, we, we just quoted um, McKinsey, McKinsey and Company, um, uh, the famous uh, strategy consultants. 
um, that uh, that came out with a report where they talked with you know like their top CEOs, I think it was from from like you know the big companies, and that was their statement: if you don't have a space strategy, you need one. And it really they in that report they talk about this parallel um, between what happened in the 80s and 90s, where the equivalent quote was like. Um, if you don't have an internet strategy, you need one. And I think in retrospect, it was a very, very prescient quote at that point in time, given how important the internet has become to just about any company on planet Earth. And when you think about what drove the internet underneath it, it was Moore's law. It was like the doubling of processor speed um, every two years that allowed more and more applications um, uh, to be run. And then, of course, you know, the bandwidth, the availability of the internet increased. Well, we have the same thing happening in space now. We have a, a, a tenfold improve of capabilities every five years' time, which is even a little bit faster than Moore's law, um, if, if you run the math on that. And we have a massive increase in availability of getting into space with more rocket launches happening every single year. Each and every rocket can launch more satellites. And so we have more capabilities in space. And so I think that's, that's what McKinsey was going at. It's like this space is, is developing exponentially and uh, is giving advantages to those that use it. And so their advice was, if you don't have a strategy, you need one. Wow, fascinating. Uh, Kimberly Burke wants to know, will the mass of the lemurs and minas or other Spire satellites in the constellation change significantly with the incorporation of this new tech? So actually, no, like that's, that was one of like the, the real breakthroughs was that we were able to add those, those lasers onto the satellites by sticking with the small mass of the satellites. We are still, you know, satellites that are, are you know, the size of a bottle of wine or maybe a case of wine um, uh, in our largest form factors. I mean, we, we still feel, you know, very, very comfortable with that. And the number of use cases that we can solve with that form factor, with that mass, keeps increasing as the technology keeps on improving, stays on that um, tenfold every five year improvement for a fixed size capability that I just mentioned beforehand. A few financial questions from Peter Sidati. When do you expect to be gap earnings positive and cash flow positive? So Spire has uh, uh, put that stake in the ground a long, long time ago, um, uh, uh, over about, about a year and a half ago, where we said for the first time when uh, we expect to be free cash for positive. And at the end of Q1, when we did our earnings call, we reiterated that uh, and at that point in time said that we um, uh, expect to be free cash for positive in nine to 15 months from that. We're currently in a, um, a, a blackout period, but stay tuned. You know, of course, everyone knows the second quarter has passed, which means, you know, pretty soon the company like Spire will make its earnings call. And then we will be, you know, excited to talk about our timelines with regards to free cash or profitability again. I'm originally from Europe. Um, uh, we believe that companies are supposed to make money and we have been on that march and are very, very excited to talk about it and are very, very determined um, uh, to, to stay on that path that we have talked about for now quite some time already. We have a kind of a statement and question from John Georgelis, and due to time, this might be our last one. He's basically asking if you intend to sell shares after the reverse split. Often fund managers require a higher share price. However, Bank of America's downgrade was in bad faith, initiated by space analyst Ronald Epstein. I'm sure you know all about this. Spire stock should be trading at around or at least $2 plus like its peers. This company is beyond market dislocated and care should be taken over dilution and aggressive short selling practices. This company is coveted. So we have a question and a statement. How do you respond, Peter? So, you know, I, I definitely appreciate statements like, you know, the company is, uh, uh, is coveted and is, you know, absolutely undervalued. Um, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's definitely appreciated. Um, so from, uh, from our perspective, you know, we are excited and have received very positive feedback from, uh, from analysts that um, having a reverse split gives um, us access to additional investors. Um, uh, and I think that's, that's a very positive sign for everyone. Um, I, I personally um, uh, have, have, have no interest in, in selling shares. You know, I'm, I'm, I would love to buy more shares. So um, um, I don't know if that answers the questions. I appreciate the statement of, of Spire being a coveted company. 
um, uh, and with regards to a higher stock price, giving us access to additional investors. Very excited about them buying more of Spire shares. And quickly, Baron Garcia says, congratulations on the Ocean Mind deal. Can you talk about the potential of that deal? Is it average size as far as your others are? Um, you know, most of our deals start, you know, somewhat in the in the average category and then have tremendous amount of potential to grow from there. As you see, like our average, you know, that retention rate is 117 percent. But we certainly have seen customers um, uh, doubling or tripling their, their their contract size with us as they see the value and the power of our data analytics for them. We're deeply excited about uh, about the deal with Oceanmine. And we're definitely looking forward to helping them achieve their goals, um, help them solve their customers' problems, and see how we can do even more for, the, um, for them than what we do already today. And Miles Diefenbach wants to know a little update on Exact Earth. How has that integration gone? Um, at this point in time, I would say the integration is absolutely and 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 fully complete. You know, for for um, uh, for, for for all intents and purposes that I can I can see and uh, and tell. So we're very excited about that integration, very excited about the additional talent and capabilities and customers that we have picked up um, and, and look, look forward with, with great optimism of continuing to serve their customers with more Spire products, um, uh, our customers with some of the, uh, the exact Earth products. And we have brought out new, a new product that is uh, based on the combined technologies of exact Earth um, uh, and Spire that have uh, found a great resonance in the marketplace in particular, when it gets to the safety and security of maritime operations, often called maritime domain awareness, um, where especially recently there have been a heightened interest in those type of products and the combined capabilities um, that happened when we brought them uh, into Spire really allowed us to offer unique products that no one else in the world, as far as we, we, we know about, can actually offer. And the resonance with customers would, uh, would, uh, would support that, uh, that belief. Wonderful. Peter, it's been a joy speaking with you today. Congratulations on all this progress. And we would love to hear from you in the near future about some updates. Thanks for joining us. Likewise, Anna. A pleasure as always. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And, uh, and see you soon. All right, everyone, stay with us. We're just beginning our conference. We'll be right back with our next presenter.